You have found the No Time For podcast. Uh, this is just a beta podcast where we were testing out software and microphone setups. Unfortunately, we ran into some recording issues um, where the audio drops out from time to time. You'll hear some fast forwarding effects when this happens. We tried to salvage as much as we could and keep the stories that were mostly intact. Um, finally, uh, we also talk about uh, why we're doing a podcast and how we want to evolve it in the future. Please enjoy. Welcome to the podcast to be named later. I'm your host, Eric Kinsella, and your co-host and mine, J. Edwin Bishop. Hey. Welcome to the old man in the podcast. I'm your host, E. Anthony Kinsella, and your co-host and mine, J. Edwin Bishop. Hey. Welcome to a work in podcast. I'm your host, E. Anthony Kinsella, and here's your co-host and mine, J. Edwin Bishop. Light, like camera, right, action. Cool. I did the one podcast that uh, you listen to, which is I think inspired you to contact me. I've been starting to listen to it more lately, and uh, uh, I talk about I'll talk about all the time about a comic book one called Comic Cafe, but because um, that's the one I listen to primarily. Um, but I listened to like the recently uh, the whole um, serial, the, the threads did three seasons I think. Yep. Um, that was really fun. That was really fun to listen to at work. Cause I think I, I only got through one, but yeah. Yeah, they were they were, yeah, they were as good after the first one. Oh, so. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I, and we've talked for 20 years now about doing something creatively together and it's just never, Always never worked out. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for making me feel old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 20 years is not an exaggeration. <laughs> it is it's just a cold, hard fact. Yeah. So what kind of podcast do you like to listen to most? Uh, at work, I like to listen to, um, like serial, like murder mystery kind of like news ones I, I find they actually um when i'm when i'm working on the the admin portion of my job for uh for the general manager when she she requests reports and stuff from me and i just want to shut the rest of the office out i actually find those those podcasts actually don't distract me from my work and keep me focused i actually work faster by listening yeah. to them which um at first my boss wasn't really a big fan of me listening to him but then she saw that i was working like twice as fast and so she's like yeah that's fine <laughs> <laughs> you do what you need to do yeah i mean i listen to them on the way to work a lot of times um in the past uh, work from home mostly now but so that other than driving the kids to school and stuff um so a lot of my stuff's you know it's got to also be kid friendly a lot of times so yep. you know it is what it, i mean they sneak a few through here and there and the kids are like what what did i just say and i'm like uh dad says that word all the time yeah so no i, I like a lot of i don't know there's a few local ones i really enjoy there's a couple of comedians um they have a podcast called uh middle of somewhere and uh, it's two local guys from acme um oh, cool. and they're super funny and you know they just they just riff off each other a lot of times so i don't know i've been into that one lately um there's some tv show ones that i there's so much crap out there to listen to i yeah it's... or and watch I mean, and listen to podcast wise that you know you got to find somebody that kind of has your taste yeah and so they can filter it out for you and so there's a sh- one called the watch that i listen to some some guys that used to write for spin magazine they do oh. it together and so you know my taste and their taste seem to be closer than other people i've found so i tend to listen to that one it's yeah it's hard to i in finding new ones i find myself listening to the same ones again like i'll listen to the, the comic cafe guys same podcast like three or four times because i find new things um but I, it's the same with like tv shows like i've been watching law and order svu again and again just because it's easy and i can like read and i I don't know. It's like these other new, these new TV shows. There's so much TV out there now um, that it's hard for me to get into a new show because it feels like such a commitment. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, especially like, if it's already got three, four seasons. Yeah, like here's twelve episodes, four seasons. Yeah, here's fifty hours of content to. The... Well, and like you know, as a kid collecting comic books, all I wanted to see was comic books on tv and in movies sure. and now it's now it's here and like it's I, peak comic book right now yeah i can't i can't i haven't watched half of it like i want to watch preacher but it seems like such a commitment to watch four seasons of you know 10 yeah. hours a season and i've heard good and bad things about that show too and i haven't started it like yeah you know it's on right after something i watched and i can't remember what it is off the top of my head or it was for a long time but it's like there's also a show expanse on amazon yeah I've been that told, people rave about yeah i'm um, for sci-fi and i'm like I should totally be watching that, but yeah. there's eight other things I want to watch right now too. Well, and and I I, I find that I I like to multitask. Like I have a stack of comic books and a stack of books that I'm reading. Um, I've got my oh, is that mine? I've got my uh, 
my dog now that needs like my constant attention. So that's like 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 I was saying, I, I go back to like SVU because I can turn an episode of it on, and I'm entertained when I'm watching it. But then I can like walk away from it for ten minutes, and I still come back, and it's like yeah. not really that much has happened. Yeah. Whereas like with something like The Expanse, I've been told to watch that too, but like I have to commit an hour to sitting there focused on watching that yeah. that episode. Otherwise, and no one I'm interrupting gonna, it. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. And uh, totally. there's just yeah, there's there's so many other. I mean, but then you know there are things like like I just um, watch through Watchmen on HBO, and that's like I I almost don't want to watch another show now because that was so good. Yeah. That it's like well, preacher's just gonna let me down. <laughs> like <laughs> I I just, so I went back uh, uh, and read the original series again because I realized that when I started watching the TV show, I was assumed it was gonna be a sequel to the movie. Yeah. Um, but it was a sequel to the comic book. Yeah. And there's so many Easter eggs. Like, I read, I watched all nine episodes of Watchmen, and then I read the, the, the trade paperback I have again. And, like, everything, even, like, and it, half of it doesn't matter. You still enjoy the show, yeah. even without knowing it. But then you see all these things. Like, like the book uh, Ozymandias is reading in the prison on Europa is by the author of the Black Pirate ship that's, like, kind of the backstory in the comic oh, book. Okay. Um, it's just little subtle things like that. <laughs> Um, with Damon Lindelof, or I, I probably didn't say that name right. But, I think you did. And, <laughs> but they've always kind of been hot messes. And, oh, uh, especially towards the end. Of the... Oh, your TV show to end? Yeah. And this, but it doesn't even sound like they're going to do in a second season, for He sure. doesn't, the interview I read, he doesn't care if they do a second season. He has no interest. He told the story he wanted to tell. Yeah. Um, and I can respect that. I mean, he said if if something comes to him that he wants to, yeah, he's got more to say. It's not necessarily a serial. Like, yeah, he's not necessarily. He did the story he wanted to. It's uh, it reminds me of uh, J. Michael Straczynski did what was the TV show? Um, Babylon Five. Yeah, uh, it was five seasons, and J. Michael Straczynski uh, presented it as five se- seasons. And uh, again, that's another one of the shows that I want to watch, but I haven't watched. But mm-hmm. I've heard it's very, it's a lot of moving parts, but they all have a purpose. Whereas, you know, like you're saying with like Lost, like they kept having to go another season. So it's like, well, shit, what do we do now? Are we got to draw it out or we got to come up with more story or... You know. Yeah. And uh, and then and then characters and the story suffered because of that. And because you had to have a writer's room. I mean, I think a writer's room is a, is a great thing too. I've, I've worked when we, we used to do No Time for TV. Like I worked with Mikey and Linda and Todd in a group and, and Chris Loomis and... Uh, and that those days were really fun, but then like you look at Watchmen and it it had a very like singular vision that was Damon Lindelof's and uh, you know he had different directors for each episode, but the the story and kind of the plot was his and it wasn't it wasn't influenced. We've got a good show. Um, it's similar. It reminds me too of, of like uh, Sandman, the comic book. some one-offs and one-shots and stuff um but he came to them and said he had like a he had an ed- karen berger who's his the editor of vertigo like had the the smarts to be like let yeah. his stories because he was able to end it when he wanted to yeah i i heard the the guy worth of things yeah worth of idea like that's how long and that's basically what they let him do on uh, you know a bit that show's been all over the place he's tried lots of different things and some of them haven't worked and some yeah. of them are awesome and i that's another one of the shows that i've been told that i i, I would love is mr robot and uh i wish i would have started watching it when it came out i it's got a terrible title like mr. robot yeah it just that threw me off you like, gotta get over it it's christian slater's in it so. <laughs> And it's maybe it's not a terrible title once you get into it, but like I just that didn't like att- appeal to me at all sure. when I saw it. I, from for some reason, I thought it was going to be something along the lines of like Robot Chicken, oh sure, or like like a, a sketch type show. Yeah. I, I don't know why I thought <laughs> Robot Chicken. I think I think they do great work. Yeah. It's just not not for me. I haven't even started the last season yeah like i'm waiting for them all to be available to go at my own pace that's the other thing i have a hard time with like the binging model versus like the weekly model people seem to talk about shows if they go week to week but it's so hard to talk about them yeah if they're all just dumped on you in one day and so there's multiple podcasts i talk about too where they like 
the watch. We'll talk about, like, they don't know how to chunk it up. Like, do we talk about the first three? Yeah. Do we talk about the whole season? Do we, you know... It's, it's true. There's a... Uh, it's got to be similar with comic books. Do you, like, do a whole run? Do you do... Yep. Yeah. Well, and there's... It, with comic books now, too, there, there are different... Um, there's different styles of readers. There's there's the trade waiters who, yeah. who don't buy single issues anymore. Yeah. Um, there's the online... You know, people get them on their tablets and... Uh, and those those people generally binge. Um, you know, they'll they'll buy they'll wait for twenty issues to come out, and then um, and even me as a as a single issue collector, um, I binge too. Like I I will you know I'll buy twenty issues of the X Men before, or if I know there's a storyline going on, yeah, because I know I'm gonna forget. No. you know the the subtler plot points in the first issue by the time the sixth issue comes out. So I just wait for it all. Yeah. Um, but then it makes no sense because it's like what. What am I spending four dollars this week for for something I'm gonna read in seven months? You know, like. Oh no, no, no! I think that's hard too. With um, there are also a couple podcasts that talk about music that I listen to, and they're like, "Well, how do we do a review when nobody's putting out giant albums anymore? They're yeah. not full concept albums. They're talking about you know a two song EP that came out, like yeah." I- New song came out. Like I sat by the radio and like. Listen to you know KS ninety five. Hadn't been invented yet. And like I remember my uh, my old friend Tom, the the guy that one of the guys that owned the four hundred bar. Um, he talked about it. he had four kids and they didn't own a single CD between the four of them. Every and they had a huge. He's his family's a huge music family. They had a yeah. huge music collection. Frankie is his oldest son had never owned a cd like i thought maybe at least frankie would have had one because he was he was a little older but um that's crazy they had everything they started by the time they started like collecting music it was the what was the first editor the ipod or whatever yeah. that one was called yeah they had they had ipods and so they just had their whole music library was on a device yeah. they bought i mean they bought most of it but they bought it online and uh no i know and then the phone itself wiped it out it's like just think about all the music that we listened to in college that Probably isn't even you couldn't even find it on Spotify or yeah. It's like there's so much music that never really, other than being on CD, got digitized. But like I have hundreds of CDs that yeah, five people probably remember at this point. That's the part that well, is insane I, to me. I you even know, with I, all the digital stuff that's out there, it's like not everything got saved. Yeah, not everything no. exists. You know, I I have a, a from my ten tenure at the uh, at the four hundred when I left. Um, well, kind of more when they closed. The closed was down a couple years later, but uh, Bill, who's Tom's younger brother, gave me the CD collection that used to be behind the the. Um, uh, you know. I have so many CDs that have never that that were released out of the back of someone's van. Sure. You know it. Ripped it from whatever they yeah, had. Yeah, I mean, the time. half of them are burned CDs. You know, out of your out of your. You know, the Sharpie has worn off over yep. the years. I have a whole set of those. Yeah, and I've got... Uh, you know... To the board. Um, to the board, and then yeah. and then burned a CD later. And uh, that's stuff that's... Well, the show that night, you know? Yeah. That stuff I think would be interesting. I don't know. It, you know the problem with a lot of that stuff is music rights and things like that. Yeah. Like, what do you do with it, even if you do have it? You can trade it with people. Yeah, you can't. You know, the motivation behind it can't be money based because there's no there's, there's no money behind there's it no to money be able to yeah. have. Yeah, but it's you know it'd be fun to be able to find if there was a certain song that you know existed, yeah. you know was on a CD somewhere. I mean, that's what you know Napster and those those kind of things back in the day kind of allowed you to do to be able to search for that stuff. You can do that some mm-hmm. still on some of the peer to peer networks, but it's like. Even that's too much of a hassle. Like yeah. you're so used to having it on your phone and being able to say, "Well, yeah, I have that on CD or I have that on a record," but it's ninety nine cents for you. Yeah, like it's not. Yeah. Do I really? Am I taking the time to take that out of the you know the yeah, case? The convenience of it is put it in the computer, rip it to MP three, put it on my phone, or do I hit this button for ninety nine cents and say, "Yep, whatever." So, yeah. I don't know where that leaves all that music, but like, I mean, that's probably been true since. The beginning of time, though, right? You know, kept on to that record and that, you know, single existed record stores and things like that. Well, 
Hensler, who's a friend of mine, who's who's not a musician anymore. He lives out in New York now with his family. But um, one of one of my favorite songs by him, he never recorded. You know, and he like last time I saw him, he he doesn't even remember how to play it. But I have it. I I found in that collection I got from Bill, like he had done a like test a test of it at the four hundred. Sure. And it was on this C D, like not even marked clearly. Like it just <laughs> said it said something like demos. And I was just listening to it to listen to it and there was there was Bo singing that song and like I told Bo that I had that on a C D and he's like 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 no one no no one else himself included has that song. Yeah. <laughs> Did he ask for it? No, he didn't care. <laughs> he's his I think I think I think music broke his heart, so oh, I think he moved on to other things. <laughs> Maybe in twenty years. <laughs> Actually, uh, just for a fun fact, he he was the um, with his wife, who was not his wife at the time. That was his big show. Is that uh, your favorite four hundred bar story from the wall falling, or the? It's not. I'll I'll just tell the brief version. Um, So it was after the thirty five W bridge collapse, like a year later. is not meant to have semi trucks driving up and down it, especially not it's 100, not 100 a day. For cars to be driving. Yeah, <laughs> it's and, not uh, the straightest road. So it was shaking. It was you'd, you'd feel the trucks go by in the bar when when it when it drive by, and so that the outer wall, this red brick wall, started to bow out, and uh, we knew at some point it was going to come down. And, and Bo was playing. Was it a facade? Was it like actually just kind of painted on like fake bricks? No, it was real bricks. Real bricks. It was. I mean, it wasn't the exterior of the building it was just it was yeah. just a you know just an outer yeah whatever you call facade i guess you yeah. call it sorry uh, i didn't quite catch that <laughs> sorry. no problem siri um but uh anyway it started bow, uh, to, to to bow out and um we knew it was going to fall at some point and it was where bow was bow was playing and hit hit by a brick but um he was okay like we had, we, we called an ambulance still um but i went in you know i came up Off. So I'm going around, to, you know, I stop the show and I'm asking people to go out the back door and uh, off, man, like we got to go, we got to go outside. Like it's not, it's not, I don't know if it's a load bearing wall. I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, there's still a wall there, but the bricks are gone. And uh, so we get in, we call up Tom and he comes down and we make sure Bo's brother is, is okay. And the ambulance gives him an okay to go home. And, and uh, it was Tim and I working Tim Schwartz, and um, we called up our Aaron, who's another another bartender there, and we're like, hey, you know, like this happened, we're gonna go down to the, the Triple Rock and get a beer, since we we don't know if we have a job anymore. <laughs> and, and, One last uh, misery beer. So you know, let's go spend the last twenty dollars we just made and <laughs> figure it out tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, we go out to the Triple Rock and we're sitting at the bar having a beer, and uh, Triple Rock notoriously like I for some reason they hated. I mean, well, I know what Tom was kind of a curmudgeon, but. Um, they hated Tom. Everyone hated, there hated Tom. I, I I liked the trip rock. I had no problem with it. But they all hated Tom. And we're there, and we can hear the uh, one of the waiters talking with some some of the customers. And he's like, he's like, yeah, the the wall fell down at the four hundred bar. I heard, I heard like five people died. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. That was a quick rumor to spread out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, it was. This is you know probably forty five minutes after the wall <laughs> fell down, and uh, we didn't say anything. By we the just, end of the night, it was twelve people. Yeah, and... but. That was uh that was a good time, but then yeah, then I didn't have a job for you know almost a month, and yeah. uh, we d- redirected some shows around and stuff. And uh, Tom was pretty good about like making sure we'd all pay our rent and making sure we could, you know had some some groceries. Um, but he was also spending a small fortune, you know, yeah. getting his bar because then you know when the when the wall fell, the health inspectors get to come into your building. <laughs> the you know well everybody comes. All the inspectors, inspectors come in. Yeah. And, yeah, you got to you got to fix everything because once you start construction on something, yeah, you know we're, we're running into the same thing at the co-op right now. We're trying to do a reconstruction job, and, and we've realized if we're going to start one place in the building, we actually have to do the entire building because like if you it rewire electrical, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um, so same thing happened with Foreigner. We had you know all these people coming in because we if were you had any work done prior. They had the right permits had to exist back then. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Also yep. gets looked. And we we didn't do very much stuff over the table at the <laughs> four hundred bars. So. Um, Finding those records. And I mean, everything. was there even a table, really? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Over, under, through the table. Um, but yeah, like, uh, and when inspectors rarely got into the building because um, generally we didn't open until until 8 p.m. at night. 
We'll edit this part out later. Yeah. Sorry. No, no worries. Um, what was that? So how did uh you you get? Oh, I have the here's the question I wanted to ask. Did you keep a brick? Was my question. <laughs> I Did should. Have, I, I didn't keep a brick, but Tim actually took um, like twenty bricks and built a little like patio oh, okay. in his front when I when I used to live in the condos. Um, I I had a brick for a while at one point, but I don't know what I did with it. Sure. I mean, it's one of those things where like years later, you're like, I wish I would have yep. like done a better job <laughs> figuring out what what happened to that. But sure. What's in there now? Ah. They sold it to the Somali Community Center, um, yeah. which used to be right kind of back by the light rail stop there, which is still there. It's not that um, far away. Yeah, yeah, just a block and a half down. Um, <laughs> neighbors still live there, who are my, one of my mom's good friends, and so when my mom comes up to visit, she usually stays there, and I'll go down and have dinner there, and so it's weird to look in the back. Yeah, like they they run a daycare, the the wife sure. runs a daycare there, and so she's created this whole playground in the backyard that just wasn't there before yeah. um which i wish it would have been when i was like, that <laughs> great but <laughs> um but yeah it's weird to go back and i still have um it's also going to be weird just to be just on the outside of it like not you know beat enough around it to yeah well yeah with the 400 like it's it's weird to go back because it looks the same it doesn't say the 400 on the side yeah. but the building, the building still looks the same it's that we put up that shitty wall afterwards and painted it black yeah. um and they haven't it, done any major outside renovations since yeah. then yeah um I mean, I don't know what the upstairs looks like if they fix that, because that, that was a burnt, I mean, it was just a burnt out husk. Yeah. Because um, there had been a fire up there. It had, been, yeah. it had been an apartment at one point, and there was a fire. <laughs> Buildings there originally. Yeah. Um, and so where the stage is, where this was the second building. Oh, okay. And then where that, you know, you kind I of go through that, that pillar yeah. area, um, that was, that was in the original stage, it used to just be down by the window. Yeah. And it was just a long, skinny, narrow bar. Um, and then the upstairs were both apartments. Um, the front of our, when the, the bricks fell, the old the old um, wall that was there was it was actually like it was a general store at some mm. point like a hundred year, hundred years ago. Yeah. And the signage for that was kind of rotting away, but it's still there. Um, but there'd always been apartments upstairs. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but then it was just storage stuff. And, and like I remember one year, one summer, Bill wanted to clean some of the junk out up there, and, and so he was paying me to come by in the afternoon. Oh. it up and I was like well, there's a bunch of paperwork in here bill do you need do you need to keep this and he's like he's like oh that's why did he have both <laughs> and, was he and, also uh, doing this, their taxes on the side he, like, he was their man yeah but he had yeah all the all the all the all the road expenses you know and everything like that and uh <laughs> look for it uh, dave perner was on uh the current not too it was like a couple of weeks ago Mary, he's on the show with mary lucia and oh yeah there was some tension on there like it was yeah he was being goofy and weird and she was like trying to get him to say anything and it was like i don't know i don't i wonder what it'd be like to go to one of their shows because i haven't been and i haven't seen a solo sound show since uh the one they did at the 400 at right after hurricane katrina um, yeah. So that's 10, 10 plus years. I guess apparently, I think they were doing a show at the 7th Street Entry around New Year's sometime. Yeah, I think Holidays. So. Yeah. They tend to do something. They tend to do, you generally do something Thanksgiving, <clears throat> Christmas time, so yeah. somewhere in here. But... And then he was on there like promoting a, a book of lyrics or something like that, or something that they were doing. He's. I've never really had much of a chance to meet him. I mean, I've been in the same room with him. I knew his brother, Paul, a little bit better. <laughs> Andy was friends with. Uh, so there's this band called the 757s, which is Paul Perner, and um, it's one of uh, Dylan's nephews. Um, I can't think of his name right now. And then it was one of the other guys from Semisonic. They're all like kind of like either the like brothers or like second, you know, like sure. related to more famous musicians. <laughs> <laughs> so this wasn't Golden Spawn, uh, they were saying. No. Um, but they, they wanted to go down to South by Southwest. They'd gotten, um, they, they had a bunch of shows, but they didn't want to drive their gear down. They wanted to fly because they all actually had other, other careers where they actually made decent money. Sure. So they paid me and Andy to drive, drive all their gear down wow. to, down to Texas. And then, um, they flew down and played their shows, but that was fun. It was a fun week. I got to hang out with it. Paul was, Paul's a nice guy. He's, uh, it must've been early days South by Southwest though, too. Like this is, was it relatively recently? Nah, this would have been. Just... 
I think it's in my Facebook. There's like about one picture mm-hmm. from it that's probably dated. Um, this was the to work, and then the second year I went with uh, Nikki Schultz and my friend Will. And that was just, like now it's such a huge deal that like they're doing there's. I, music anymore it's like yeah crazy it, it was we when we went it was like you know, you like i remember there's this one outdoor venue you go and you pay like a five dollar charge to get in it was hosted by like a local brewery and they had like 20 kegs and it was True. drink until the kegs are gone yeah. you know and a uh, bunch of bad you know bigger but not like huge acts were playing like they had an outdoor stage and so uh, we'd just go there and just spend the whole day. We'd just drink there until the beer ran out. And then, you know, you could always, the two years I went, you could always find free stuff. Like, because they just wanted to get you in the door yeah. to come, you know. Um, you could always find buffets of food for free. And uh, Yeah, all that's changed. Yeah. Totally different. It was it was, it was was fun. It was a blast when we went. I, I remember we were, we were at that outdoor venue, and uh, there, was, there was a guy, he had white pants on. <laughs> And uh, no T-shirt. And I pointed out to my friend Nikki Schultz. I said, "Schultz, I said, look at that guy. He's he's not he's not wearing a T-shirt." And she's like, "There's like, there's lots of guys not wearing T-shirts here. It's hot outside, and we're outside." And I said, "Yeah, but he like doesn't have a T-shirt hanging out of his back pocket. It's not like looped through his belt. Like he left his apartment this morning without the intention of ever putting a shirt on." I think that's part of just being in the South, though. <laughs> yeah. like, like, and not being the. You know, chubby guy. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, you know, it's like, ah, it's kind of warm out. I don't need a shirt today. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often in my life. Yeah, I, I, I don't go shirtless in public. <laughs> it's just not a not a thing I do. So how did Tom let you do uh, No Time for TV at the Foreigner Bar? How did that even... With, um, I think he was with Bright Eyes overseas. But he brought a, a bottle, he snuck a bottle of absinthe back in his... And I remember Tom coming over and looking at us, and he's like, "What are you, what are you two idiots doing? Like, that's the worst way to drink absinthe. Like, you're gonna get screwed up." Uh, and he was right. Like, I went to make a drink, and I had like no depth perception. Like, I couldn't get my hand on the drink. Uh, but anyway, so it I went was home. Legal at this point, absinthe. Uh, there was the legalized version oh, that was yeah. here, but this was the this is the one that had this still had the psychedelic in it. Yeah. Um, and then and I, I went, didn't dip any cops or listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I went Nothing home. illegal ever happened at the 400 bar. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't. I should get, get Tom. Well, Tom passed away this year, so I don't have to worry about you know, getting him in trouble. He's he's gone. Um, Might be no. And uh, but anyway, so I went home. I went home and uh, really hung over the next morning. Like second worst I've ever been. Uh, the first was after drinking night of drinking Uzu. But then... <laughs> report at the time. So all I had was an antenna, an antenna for television. That barely came in, and there was just someone at work in a meeting was was making fun of me and calling me a hipster, mm. and I was like looking at the shirt I was wearing is actually one I bought I think when I was in high school at Target, and like like I have I am I agree I like I have a hipster look or whatever, but like it's the same I've looked for pretty much the last twenty five years, mm. and so I was telling him like I'm just I just happen to cycle in right now I'll, <laughs> I'll cycle back out again at some point. <laughs> Target will stop having my novelty t-shirts <laughs> <Yeah>. eventually <laughs> um, that I actually bought in the 1990s. Uh, but yeah, the same. Yeah, the trends you know tend to tend to cycle through like that too. Um, but anyways, I was thinking that, and I was thinking like uh, how fun it would be to put on new episodes of a TV show each week as a short play on Sunday nights, um, and then I'll get a bunch of my friends who are musicians to play afterwards because then I can get them to bring some of my friends down, which didn't really work out. No one ever really came. Uh, <laughs> Um, but it was really fun. You know, we did about, uh, 12 of them. I think we did it for about three months. Insert clip here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is still some of them on YouTube. The Ben, um, our friend, our friend Ben yet had, had, uh, he filmed all of them, put three or four of them up on Facebook. And I, I've bothered him off and on again over the years to, to get the rest of them. And he's just never had the time to compress them and put them sure. do whatever he needs to do to, to get them in working order. Yeah. Um, but he has them all. I hope he still has them all. I would love to like someday get them and put them on like a DVD Yeah. and give it out to like my friends and like, especially like TD and Mikey and Linda. Cause they yeah, actually were the, the, the pretty regular participants. 
I remember the, the first one we did, I, I reached out to Kathy, our friend Kathy Krecki, and um, she's a, an act, you know, she acts, um, and uh, she gave me this, like, email list of all her actor buddies, mm-hmm. actor and actress buddies, and I sent out a thing, said, I'm doing this thing called No Time for TV, blah, 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 you know, I need, and uh, I got, I got two people, they're in, two in one, two, they're in one of the videos, oh, they're, really? they're they on, actually showed the, up? Um, uh, How I Met Your Mother episode. It's, I've seen that one. It's Todd, me, and then these two people who I've never met before who came down for one rehearsal and then did the live performance with us. And uh, <laughs> apparently it was such a terrible experience for them. And they, like, warned the rest of the group on, like, the list. So, like, no one ever responded to me again. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't pay. And, uh, you know, they didn't get free drinks. Yeah. It wasn't, like... I mean, people pay money to actually go and do, like... Interesting. Maybe we're just a little too early. Yeah, my timing, my timing. Um, which is about 10 to 12 pages of script, yeah. but generally it's about a page a minute. Is, I mean, is people pay time. to do improv classes now. Yeah. Like, and then do one show at the end. I mean... Yeah, I mean... It, it uh, seems like a lot of venues... Like, it's got to be so hard right now to, like, cap... Like, people make most of the money touring right now, right? Yep. And selling merch. They don't make any money off of music. Really. No, music sales are, are... They make pennies. And to constantly have... You would think <coughs> these venues would have to do something more than they're doing. To also, like, make money. Like, be a second whatever or you know have a backup plan for things seems like i just i i don't think i don't think anyone is making money i mean i think that's why so many of them are also not yeah i mean so many of the viable. the big clubs have have closed yeah. over the last last 10 15 years it's depressing that that they've got away because there's so much culture and history there but yeah um i can't remember the name of the one in colorado uh but that was a, a pretty big one and then it's it's some of it too is like these midwestern stops have just become colorado and minneapolis just aren't destinations that bands want to go to anymore um, yeah and also i mean i think it's tough to locally because it's never on the weekends right yeah it's always they're they're stopping here to get somewhere else yeah to do a show yeah and so Partially the reason why they... a Tuesday yeah. night or a Thursday night or whatever isn't going to sell. Yeah, <clears throat> as well as a Friday or something. Look, to yeah, makes it really tough. Yeah, I mean, I'd be interested. It's been so many years since I've been out of that. I don't, I don't know anyone anymore, but it'd be interesting to know, like, how First Avenue is doing. From um, behind the scenes, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I used to, you know, I used to know Sonia the Booker there, and uh, I'm, I mean, I think I think Ron is still there too, um, but I don't really talk to him anymore. So yeah. it's been it's been so, like I said earlier. You know, but they've uh, kind of consolidated too. Like they've bought other clubs locally. Like they have the Turf yeah. Club and different places. And I don't know how long that's been that they've done that, but it seems like it's been a while. But like that's how you know they kind of they make more money behind the scenes than they do. Like it's not just a upfront. Yeah, at like, the door cost. Yeah, or anything, or... promotion. Promotions, their promotions make them a little bit more money than I think. Than um, which you have to, you know, four hundred buyer went under because we just Tom just refused to change. Yeah, and uh, it became it. People didn't go out to see live music anymore. Like there had to be more of a draw to it. At oh yeah, there's time. dance nights and all that kind of stuff. At yeah, first have now that it wasn't, and they're doing comedy shows. And yeah, and I think that's a guy a, come does comes to do, does five nights at first ab and wipes out anybody yeah and and that's you know we that may have been booked at the time tom tried a little bit to you know i mean he he let me do you know like we were just talking about no time for tv but i again too i think like you said we were just a little too much ahead of the game yeah. for it to take take root the way we wanted it to um we were right in the this like limbo of a number of years where nobody had any money any spare you know extra money like you would you know no one's no one's going to come pay five dollars and spend fifteen dollars on beers at our place yeah. for a band that they don't know they're gonna like at least yeah. half the songs of. Let alone maybe three of them. Yeah, and so like local guys just didn't, you know, local bands would play our bar and uh, and no one would come. Podcasts I listen to, I started listening to them more last year just to you know get a laugh once in a while instead of all like yeah listening to the murder. You know, podcasts that are out there that are all about, you know, you're trying to solve, 
solve a murder of some sort. You know? I, I sometimes worry about myself when I'm <clears throat> obsessed with these murder podcasts. I think a lot of people are. I think that it's probably genre number two. Like, it's yeah. one of the biggest ones out there. So I get the appeal. I get the serial, like, idea where it's week to week and yeah. there's always a cliffhanger and you always want to listen to another yeah. one. So, I, you know, but back to what we were talking about with the comedy, it's just, like, it's very similar. Like... <laughs> salaries for like the guy who does the first so the guy at the end and i can't remember yeah that's that's it that's it yeah and if he doesn't stop being a headliner ten thousand dollars a night and it's 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 crazy i mean it's gotta be the same way so target center sold out we were in like the nosebleed upper seats and we i think we paid 60 dollars a ticket for those those yeah. seats i mean I, I can't imagine how much money he made that night he made probably more than i make in a year yeah in one night and those know. tickets now are over a hundred dollars easy yeah like it's not for him particularly but anybody doing target center yeah comedy wise like i think joe rogan came in and did um excel recently you can go on there and i'm not a huge joe rogan fan i yeah. like his podcast once in a while I just, not, not, it's not my kind of humor if you yeah. actually watch his like Netflix special. Um, he's entertaining, but I wouldn't pay money to go see him probably. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I, <clears throat> I check out his podcast once but in a while. But $200 was the cheapest yeah. ticket in the like that. But, yep. <clears throat> you know, you're paying so much for the nostalgia half the time. you know, working the show or whatever. Mostly but, lawyers, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he's still like, like the money, it, I, there's just so much money. I, 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 it blows my mind how much money is exchanging hands out there. And it's like, where, where did, where do people have all this money that they're like, who can go out and spend a hundred dollars just for the ticket? I mean, that's, you know, we, we went out, uh, Sarah, my, my girlfriend at the time when we went, you know, uh, we spent, you know, $55 or whatever it was for the tickets. Mm. We spent $20 to park. Mm-hmm. We spent $100 on dinner because, of course, we're going to go have dinner with Cameron because we're driving up to the cities to see him. And then we had another drink at the show, which at the Target Center, you know, for a beer, it's 10 bu- ten bucks a pop. Yeah, easily. And uh, so, you know, I mean, a, a $55 ticket turns into a $250 night. Oh, it's the same with sporting events. It's yeah. crazy. Like, you have a family at all, and it's like, yeah. do you want a, do you want a, mor- a small mortgage for yeah. going on? <laughs> I can't imagine, yeah, with I didn't think that we had Sarah had two daughters and like you've got the three kids, like yeah, it's like we and I, I remember we were at uh Disney World a few years ago and I bought oh, it's insanity. lunch, which cost me like almost a hundred dollars to feed because I, I her parents were with us as well, so yeah. I bought for all all six of us. But I remember Edith, her oldest daughter, she wanted this hamburger that was like a twenty dollar hamburger. Yeah. And uh she took like two bites. But you're eating the other half. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to be hungry later. <laughs> that should be, should be the best damn hamburger you've ever eaten. It's $20. No. I was, I, it's fun to go. Like, uh, my favorite, favorite part of that trip was uh, Lyra was, I think, five at the time we went. And um, I remember we got to the first princess who was, you know, just standing there taking pictures with kids and stuff like that. Yeah. And, like, not realizing until that moment, like, looking at Lyra, looking at her, like, oh, Lyra thinks that's a real princess. Oh, like, and how into it, yeah. Yeah, she it's doesn't amazing. realize that that's, like, a no. high school kid working the weekend job. Like, that yeah. is actually, you know, whatever princess it was. Yeah. And, uh... It was that, it was the kind of that moment of like... That is Belle right there. Yeah. yeah. And just the the childhood wonder, like it was like, it was such a great moment to like forget that I'm a cynical, nasty adult now. (laughs) (laughs) And that there was a time when I was probably, you know, full of wonder as well. (laughs) Well, this is going to depress the hell out of you though. Um, Riley, I think she was four. She might have been five. And we went, took all our parents with us too. And uh, Riley does not remember ever being there. Yeah. Like, that is crazy. Weird how much they forget and the things that they, like, grab gravitate to and grab onto and remember yeah. are never the things you think they're going to be. Yeah. And so... Uh... It was it was fun when I went. I, I hadn't been there. I have a picture of the last time I was there, and I was probably, like, 12. So it had been 30 years at that point. And, uh... Not to date yourself. 
Not to take out. Let's <laughs> <laughs> figure out like, how exactly how old Jeremy is. 42. The answer is 42. <laughs> answer is always 42. <laughs> I, uh, I was working the front end uh, two weeks ago, and um, I was filling in for someone else who normally works that night. And the two cashiers was uh, Angelo and Maya were their names. And um, Maya was asking where Kathy was, the lady that normally works. And I was like, oh, she, her friends got her a ticket to the, the B-52. So I, <laughs> I covered for her tonight. And Maya just goes, what's a B-52? <laughs> and I looked at her. It's and an airplane! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, Maya's, Maya's 19 and Angela is 21. Their combined age is not as, as old as I am. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. No, it happens in every, it doesn't just, you know, it happens in every industry. It's it's crazy. I mean, there's 20-year-olds that I work with all the time. Yeah. The co- Moved into the co-op in the front end, which most of my cashiers are young people. Um, but it's been a few years since I've been out of the front yet, front end. So going back in, like, I don't relate to them anymore. Like, I, I, I struggle to, like, find things to talk about in the slow times with them. Sure. Because um, I just don't know the stuff they know. Like, yeah. I don't even understand half the terminology they use <laughs> yeah it's gonna be hard like it's a little bit easier in the tech industry because you have somewhat of a, a, t- a group of topics that you all kind of yeah. already know and you know built in it's like you can do the weather and you can yeah you can do sports and things like that if that is something you you know follow but i think having it built in with your like it's got to be much harder at the co-op just because you know not everybody's from the same yeah, circle of life. They didn't go through the same college experience, you know. In yeah, that way. yeah, and and uh, you know, I kind of like when when all of you guys kind of like took your careers and went, you know, started growing your careers. Like I just spent ten years bartending, and so like I, I didn't grow personally until I started, that way. you know, going, started working at the co-op and actually, you know, progressing up the the, the la- it's as small of a ladder as it is at the co-op. Actually, taking steps up a ladder at a company, whereas. You know, even though I, ma- I was managing bars and, and stuff like that, it's it's still just, you're just a glorified bartender, and uh, which is fine. But, you know, I realized when I turned, you know, like 35, I was like, I, yeah. my body hurts. This is, <laughs> I'm standing all the time. This is too much. Then there were podcasters. Yeah. No, oh, we're adding that up for sure. <laughs> so we went through a lot of things here. Um, kind of. Did we talk about why? I think or we just we, went, skip over it? we kind of talked about it at the beginning. Like we just want to, we just want to see if this works and do something. Yeah, what do we think? What do we think is going to happen in the future? How are we going to do more? I think it'd be interesting. Uh, I think I think TD would be interesting. Uh, yeah. I mean, everybody's going to sleep during that podcast. Yeah, but I think we could have some guests and and, and folks. You know, we could, you know, with Peter, we could probably talk about um, trading cards. Like, I, n- I never got into sports cards. Did you hear he's getting into Bitcoin? No. <laughs> it cracks me up to, like... Sorry, Peter. <laughs> not, it's, I, I, not in a funny way. Like, it's just, like, in a proud way, almost, that, like... And uh, it's great. Like he's a hard worker and stuff. But like, I just think back to yeah, the Pete. He's he's still that same Pete, but the Pete the Pete I knew in college. The five people I'm interested in seeing, I talk to still. You yeah. Know. So, but it's like it's crazy. Like for whatever reason, I can see the men. I have no idea who they are. Like I see a picture of them today, and I'm like, yeah, I should know that person. I have no idea. The you know. The girls I went to school with have a little bit better chance of, you know, they tend not to age as poorly <laughs> as the rest of us. Yeah. So it's like a little bit easier, but like. Yeah, we, Peter and I went to the, to the our 20 year um, yeah. Upper Valley High School Union a, a couple of years back and uh, four, four years ago now. Um, and uh, 25 is coming up. Yeah. Uh, and that was, it was, it was and fun. You're going to do a podcast from it. I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gone if Peter wasn't going to go. Yeah. Um, but. He does make it easier. Yeah, but like at that one, it was it was funny because the ten years previously, the, at at our tenure, um, there was these two twin brothers uh, that I gra- graduated high school with, uh, the Wagner brothers, Jeff and Joey, um, and Joey was at that one. Jeff wasn't there, and Jeff was kind of my bully in high school. Like he beat me up and several times and, and, and tormented me. And but Joey was there, and uh, 
I was a little bit drunk because Peter kept feeding me drinks. Like he was literally sitting at the bar and he'd see me empty handed and he'd send, send someone with a drink. And uh, Joey walked up and he's like, oh, hey, Jeremy, how are you? It's been, you know, it's been a long time. And, and I was just trying to break the ice and be funny. And I was like, Joey, what? it's totally okay. But so then, so then uh, I have actually stayed in touch with Joey since then, just a little like the handsomest man you've ever seen in your life now and he's like this rugged mountain man he like went up in the The women go (gasps) (laughs) uh, but he came up to me and like told me about all about how he found himself and found peace and what a jerk he was as a child and like his dad was a very abusive father and i do remember that about his dad and uh you know he's like i was just you know so of course you know like i i I, it was great because it was nice of him to like take the time to apologize, but like, you want him to still be a jerk. Or like, you know, like <laughs> a little piece of he does, you know, like, you want the, the people don't change. It's not, it's nice when they do, but it's like, you want that same narrative. Sometimes, yeah. No matter, yeah. no matter where you are personally. But just like you were saying, like I walked into that bar and, uh, sink was there with his wife, Jamie. And like, I looked around and that was the person I recognized. And it's someone I still talk to, you know. Yeah. So that's that's like you see, like you were saying, even though even though I graduated, I spent all my years at Apple Valley. And I graduated with six hundred some people. Yeah. Like the five I still want, the five I ever wanted to talk to, I still talk to. Yeah. Insert pick it up, pick it up video here. No. Um... Oh yeah, we should talk. I, I still have uh, those DVD, the DVD you made, the uh, anniversary pick it up, pick it up videos. Yeah. I watch it every once in a while. Nostalgically. That was weird. They moved those, um, they're not in the offices they were. They moved, like, oh, the, further um, north, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the MTN, the Minneapolis Television Network or whatever. Yeah, they moved offices. We actually, we had um, one of the last companies I worked at bought some uh, bought some office space down in that area. So I walked through all that, uh, yeah. that St. Anthony Main Complex all the time. And was like, this was just, now it's all offices. It's weird to go back. And it's like, it, like this is where the video library was. This is where yeah. like the you know, camera studio was, and yeah, that was a cool building. Yeah, it's still a conglomerate of like old saloons and things. Yeah. and there was a what was the name of it? One uh, what was the place where it had the uh, burgers? Uh, I was trying, just trying to think of that. Um... That place recently shut down. Tugs. Tugs. Yeah. yeah. Tugs, Tugs with two Gs. Yeah. You could so you could get these things they called the rocket, which was just like this, you know, tall cylinder of beer. There. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, that was before our time, probably. But we'd do that for a happy hour after work sometimes. And um, so that place shut down. They used to have the stuffed burger. I remember getting a stuffed burger there, and that burger has not had not changed in twenty years. Yeah. It was exactly the same, and the same bag of fries that they would, you know, rip out of the freezer and throw it. Like, right. It was the same. It was insane. It was like, how did you not change anything in twenty some years? How are you still open? Yeah, how did they stay open that long? Like, like it wasn't just... great. Location. It was a great location, but it couldn't have been cheap to rent that space no. for what they were. Up in that area yep. too. And, uh, so, just before you got to, and it was called El Jefe's, and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I was like, <laughs> and it was all, like, it was very suave inside, it was uh, like, what like... the f- <laughs> This this is all still sounding like Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah. It was it was only open on occasionally on Thursday nights, but it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then it was sort of like the uh, oh, what was the name of the place that we saw real big fish and uh, hagfish. Oh, and those guys. Um, Quest was it no, Quest? No, it wasn't the Quest. It was uh, it's in Northeast there. Yeah, it's I can see it. I can I can see the it's just that Ground it's, Zero. Ground Zero, yeah. Yep, ground Zero. Same guy still owns it because I worked in a building right next door. Yeah for a small software startup for a long time. And uh, he owns Ground Zero. He opened up a bar, also only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. (laughs) And was Disco A Go Go Night, or whatever he was calling it that day. Anybody came looking for Ground Zero, they would come up to our floor, knock on our door, (laughs) because 
you just gotta find him. And it turns out he was also a squirrel killer. <laughs> And we had a lot of uh, like kids out of college yeah. that would go release the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd see a squirrel get caught, they'd run over, open up the door, yeah. and then he came over one time and he's like, um, are you releasing the squirrels? <laughs> I'm not killing them. <laughs> I am bringing them to another location. I'm like, there's been a couple dead squirrels in the trap. People are, <laughs> people are letting them out. Uh, you're going to have to find a different way. Yeah. But yeah. Oh. I haven't been. A, I think the last time I was at Ground Zero was that real big fish, hagfish. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time for me too. I don't. I can't earn. We walked around. Well, we we got to know the guy a little bit, and yeah. he was showing us around, and it still looks like black light. You don't really see anything when you're in there half the time. Yeah. Can't I can. Man. I can barely even remember what that room looks like. I mean, I remember the cage work on the upstairs yeah that's the that's the part that burns in your memory yeah. is <laughs> on the over 18 shows where you, you were like forced to be upstairs while everybody else is down yeah yeah that's what i remember too yeah i haven't been i i've been to have a you sh- worn your head shirt head for sure but no, yeah. like the the armpits both like ripped out like that was not good I, quality I, I just i well, i wore it too much yeah. it's such a great shirt you were sure that that, that band was hagfish I've been sure about a few things in my life. <laughs> One of them was that that was Hagfish. <laughs> I don't. What was the band's name even? I, the real, uh, the real band. That we literally liked. just came up the other day with Pete for some reason. Um, uh, Hagfish was a terrible band with a great name. Homegrown <laughs> was a great band with a terrible name. Yeah. And I have those CDs somewhere. And we can listen to them now. And no one else knows anything about them. <laughs> that's how you wrap up a podcast. No, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds... It's it's about time to... It's getting close. So we're going to interview more people. Maybe not interview. Maybe have other guests on. Yeah. That probably makes sense. Probably have to have a bigger studio. When I, I was looking... person. Looking through... Yeah. We probably need more. I was looking through some of my comics and thinking about doing some... Like a... Uh, um, it made me remember that that review, I, the Blue Rhino review. That yeah. I used to do. That'd be fun to do. On Live Journal. Uh, into the social. I'm. We can take it up right now, but I'm 99% sure it's still there. That's a. Uh, some something something triggered a memory of of Nikki that I dated in college. Yeah. Uh, Always had like had it up because she always liked to read my posts as soon as they posted. Yeah. And uh, so she actually saw it live. Like Nikki, like Did posted. You screenshot it. And uh, I don't think so. I think because I, I I don't know it's probably still in my archive if I could even yeah. access my account. But I took it off like the public view. Yeah. Um. But it was yeah I like ranted about Nikki and then she like bitched me out. <laughs> and then I was like, you read my live journal? <laughs> Hello, is this like on? Is this live right now? And uh, Linda was like, it was great. It was like, like she was yell- yelling at you, and you were just like, I can't believe you read my, like, I can't believe you pay attention. <laughs> that is weird when you find out people are actually listening or reading. That makes it, I don't know, makes it harder sometimes to continue to do things. But well, you gotta, you know, I, re- I remember uh, uh, David Sedaris talked once in an interview I saw him on about like how difficult it is for him to make and maintain friendships. Yeah. Because so much of what he does is talking about those relationships and uh you know it's hard because what if you say something that you know even if you don't intentionally mean to like insult a friend or associate or you know you mm-hmm. you may reveal something they didn't want revealed or reveal a way you think about them that they didn't realize you think about them that way yeah and uh yeah so those yeah it's better so get ready peter yeah <laughs> yeah i was just thinking like when i was talking about pete before like how i'm like I'm amazed so, amazed and, pr- and proud of him but like like that could be that could be taken as insulting. I, I doubt Peter would take that as insulting, but it could be taken as insulting. Just tug it out with him later. Yeah, and uh, um, but yeah, good. yeah, but uh, it's it's yeah, like you're saying, it's it's harder sometimes when you when you know who your audience is and to you know. To sometimes sh- it's more interesting to see if your audience finds you, but not that that's ever happened for anything that we've <laughs> done together. This time, for sure. What was that? There was that post that I posted. It was like the the top ten people I wanted to punch in the neck at my, <laughs> my high school reunion. Yeah. And there was like one of them was I think it was. Uh, Did it get the most views? Yeah, I got like the most views of any of mine ever because I because I named people who went to high school in it. And uh, this is you know 
pre it was it wasn't pre internet but it was like early internet days yeah it was but i remember you used to be able to look at who was looking at witless worm you could look and see oh yeah find a path and like we found one and it was like it led back to like the name of of one of the guys that i wanted to punch <laughs> in the neck and i was like what a horrible thing <laughs> what a horrible thing for me to have written you know and and i haven't seen the poor guy in 10 years he's probably i didn't barely knew him in high school i just you know made a offhand comment about him and, or if, are you trying to make a funny post and you just used real names. Yeah. You know, I talked yeah. about. I remember just cracking up when you showed me that, and you're like, yeah, it leads back to this name. Like, That's him. That's, it's got to be him. Why, why is it? Does he own an ISP? Does he? Because he was somewhere, he was somewhere weird, too. That was why you noticed it. Yeah. It was because it, it was like, not, it was yeah. out of the country or something like yeah. that. And then to drill down and see. <laughs> like, this is a guy that's actually in that post. That's weird. But I, I, all those old with the swarm posts still out there too. All the stories that we had on there. Yeah, I mean those are all Archive in live journal. Yeah. So my guess is we can make a pretty sweet book out of it. I yeah, I I'd have to look back. I don't even remember half the stuff I wrote. And, yeah. Uh, I'm sure some of it's going to be painful to read. But... <laughs> well, anybody that reads their own stuff, I mean, yeah, it's hard to listen to yourself sometimes. But can't imagine what you thought right out of college. Yeah. That you thought was funny. I I went back one time and was looking at the posts and like some of the posts were like two sentences long. It was like yeah. not that I'm posting, but it was in the vein of what Twitter is today. Like, yeah. How was that even a thought? Why Why did you why? say send? <laughs> why was that even? Why was that important enough to do anything about? Well, and it's it's always so weird. when we were doing No Time for TV, the the weirdest thing, and when I also when I read short stories and stuff on stage at the four hundred, like the parts that I wrote for the laugh never got the laugh, <laughs> and then like stuff that I like was just like this is a filler filler sentence to get me from you know point A to point C, and uh, like people just ate it up, and it's like that wasn't God meant to be people. <laughs> How am I supposed to write when I don't know my audience? Yeah, I, that happens a lot too. Like just content creating, software development, like the things you think people are gonna love about yeah. the website you're building. You gotta just track and find out what they're actually using because ninety yeah. percent of the time you're wrong. Like yeah, you gotta see what like oh they're really just using this and we spent ninety percent of the time <laughs> building that. <laughs> and yeah, it's you it's, just gotta move on and decide to you know yeah. do what they want or do something else. You know. Well, yeah, you never know. You never know when you hit something. Like, uh, I, the the No Time for TVs were just fun. They're just dumb, fun things that we did. And I remember I did one that was, um, it was uh, um, uh, Grizzly Adams. <laughs> and and the whole joke is that nothing ever happens yeah. on Grizzly Adams. And so the whole episode is. Oh, well, except for shots of where he's walking away constantly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it was. Uh, Loomis played played Ben, and he was just laying on the floor, and it was just because he have a beard for that. No, nah, he, he just he just he 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 actually acted like a bear though. Like, so it was Loomis, <laughs> and uh, uh, Todd was Grizzly Adams, and he just cooked eggs. <laughs> and then my friend Michael uh, played Mountain Man Jack, and he came down to borrow some sugar. And that was the whole episode. The joke being, and it was ten minutes. Like it was going to be ten minutes, and the the whole joke. Being that nothing happened on Grizzly Adams, that's the whole punchline. And like we watched, we watched it in rehearsal because I'd have some friends come and we did it in rehearsal. And it's like I thought it was hilarious, but like no one else is gonna like this. <laughs> like there's no way anyone will like this. Yeah. So I was like, this is gonna be like the worst episode. Yeah. And I, I, you know, it's now it's already Saturday. We have to do it on Sunday. What am I gonna do? And so I came up Saturday you start night. Really thinking about it. Yeah, and, and, and I'm just, I, I was like, all right, I know uh, what I have to do is Grizzly Adams I did because uh, Grizzly Adams reminds me of my grandfather. Because um, every Sunday we'd go to church, and we'd go to Perkins, and then we'd go back to his house, and he would watch Star Trek with me and the whole time complain about he didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> and then he'd have me watch Grizzly Adams because he grew up on a farm. And, and the whole time I'm just like, why? What? what is the point of this? You know? And so I told all these kind of... I would come in at different parts. Like Todd would like fry some eggs, and then like the lights on him would dim, and I would come forward and read another like oh, really? short verse about you know something about my grandpa and uh you know and he passed away when i was very young so i was like kind of remembering like he was he was very much a father figure before my mom married my stepdad and told all these stories and like i would just try to hobble you know hobble yeah. something together and make it not 10 minutes of todd cooking eggs you know <laughs> and uh and mostly silence and i remember afterwards bill used to come down and tom's younger brother and when he was in town and watch those and like bill coming up and complimenting me after and saying like i've enjoyed the other ones like you've done but like that was the first real show you did 
Hmm. It would be interesting to see if did Ben, do you know if he recorded that one? Or yeah, not? he's got that one on, on recording. That would I, be a good one. I haven't seen that one. That one I haven't seen online anywhere. That'd yeah, no, it's, that one's not online. But yeah, it was. I, I mean, it's just you never know. Like I, Ben doesn't throw anything out, so there's a ninety-nine it's, cents. Yeah, chance. it's still. I'll, I'll, I'll hit him up again. And, I can hit him up too. Yeah, try to just try just if he could just give us the raw data, and you know, I can mess oh, around yeah. with it. Um, but yeah, I know. Like I, I, I didn't. I just tried to hobble something together last minute, and Bill was like, like, because it was personal. So yeah. it had more meaning. Yeah. And, uh, and it wasn't just going for jokes. And... Yeah. And that's like, you know, like when you watch, you know, like a, a TV show and then you have like that episode that like changes your opinion of something or yeah. makes you think that there's more to this. Like it's, yeah, my point being that you just never know. Yeah, like the last season of Lost. It all made sense. <laughs> 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 they really wrapped that bed, bed, bed I remember... together. I, I didn't watch Lost. They told us where the polar bear came from. <laughs> they, told us, they told us what it all meant. I remember you being uh, so mad. I, I wasn't watching the show yet at the time. I didn't watch it until later. But um, they spent so long trying to get into that first pod, oh, no. and then and then and then like they just started finding pods. And I just remember you being like, they they spent a whole season trying to get in one. Now they're just like, oh, we'll just open this one up over here. <laughs> now we'll just open this one over here. <laughs> all these all have a tunnel that connect each other. Well, God damn it! Yeah, little did we know. <laughs> so I think we'll wrap up there and. We'll do another one soon. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, thank you. All right.